Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board certified doctor of naturopathy, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares with you exactly how you can reverse aging, take back your health, and live a life full of energy and passion with new 20 minute episodes every single day to keep you healthy and engaged. Now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey everybody, excited to get into today's show. This is our Training Thursday episode of the week. Excited because I get to talk old school bodybuilding. Specifically, we're gonna be going over today though, not just for those who wanna get into bodybuilding, but actually for anybody who wants to put on a little bit of muscle and boost their metabolism. And the five steps which has worked now for the past 50 plus years in order for you to be able to do that. So whether you're looking to put on three, four, five pounds, or you're looking to put on 25 pounds, these are the specific steps that Mike Menser actually gave all of us in order to do that. So although I'm no longer in the bodybuilding stratosphere and it's something that I particularly do, I still love strength training, I still love to work out, I still love hanging out with people in this particular field. So one of the things that we want to realize is that we can learn a lot from those people um, in the past that have tried and experimented with their own body. They've written it down, they've taught it to others, and it's worked for hundreds, if not you know, hundreds of thousands of people from around the world. If you've never heard of Mike Menser before, he is someone in the bodybuilding community that a lot of people have looked up to, um, physique-wise. He obviously, I should say, I don't, I don't know if it's obvious or not, but most people that are competing in bodybuilding were using anabolic steroids, still are using anabolic steroids. His generation, uh, or when he was training, was kind of during the time of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Frank Colombo, and a lot of the greats back then. Uh, he competed essentially during like 1970, 1971 to 1980, and then retired shortly after that. He won Mr. America. He won Mr. Universe. He actually won Mr. Olympia, but he came in second overall. So he won his weight class, uh, but second overall in the Olympia. I think Tom Platts, um, I think Platts came in first overall. I can't remember that particular year. I think that was... I think that was 79. And um, just a great physique, just a very well balanced, but his training routine was a little bit different. And I actually want to share that with you here today. Um, different enough though, that people experimented with it and it's still talk about, talked about to this day. This isn't actually a topic that I thought I was going to talk very much about, but it's become so popular on YouTube. You know, Mike Menser is making this big comeback. Unfortunately, he's passed away, uh, but his training now lives on. So he's got a couple books. If this podcast interests you and you want to go a little bit deeper, you can check out uh, two of his books. One is High Intensity Training uh, with Mike Menser and the other one is called Heavy Duty. So you're welcome to check the those out. I can link them up for you here today. Just head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2855 and I'll drop in those five steps as well for you right now. But the first of those five steps is this. And I, I don't think that this one will come of any shock to you, but it's important because most people aren't following it and they're hoping for different results. So if you want to build muscle, we need to build strength. It's, it's actually, it's quite important because over time, the best way to be able to track if you're making progress is if you're getting stronger. Now, there will be, of course, people who disagree, but over the last 50 years or so, it's pretty straightforward that your goal is with each and every workout, not every workout has to be a personal best, but if you're looking to add more muscle, then you are looking to see, say, am I getting stronger? If you're getting stronger, you're getting stronger for two main reasons. One, neurological. But if you've been weightlifting for a long time, it's unlikely that you're getting that much better neurologically at lifting a weight, like to be able to balance and stabilize and all those things. So you very likely may have added a little bit more muscle or at least better motor unit control. So the first thing that Mike Menser said, agree or disagree, is that you should track your progress each and every workout. And your goal will actually be to add an extra rep, or a little bit of weight with each workout. So really important that we look at this, and then when you're no longer getting results with that workout, then you can switch that workout. But it's also not imperative that you switch the workout if you're still getting results. So I think that that's one thing to look at as well. That's number one. All right, the second thing that he said is that you wanna eat slightly above caloric maintenance. He was not someone, this is very different about Mike Menser as well. He is not someone that used to gain 70, 
80, 100 pounds away from his show weight. There are people that compete at 230 that literally get up to 300 pounds, like in, in bodybuilding based community and beyond. So what I want to share with you is that he believed in somewhere around like a 10% to 20% caloric surplus, and that would enable you to make sure you are in an anabolic state. So the way to be in a more anabolic state is to always make sure that your body is not searching for more carbohydrates, searching for more fatty acids from fat or more amino acids from protein. So Mike Menzer always believed in making sure that you're eating throughout the day. There was not a lot of, of course, intermittent fasting back then. You can still do intermittent fasting, but you, it will be slightly detrimental to being in an anabolic state because the longer you fast, the more you move towards a catabolic state. So making sure that you get your surpluses on protein, carbs and fat, not necessarily in just one particular area. All right, the third step to being able to add more muscle is training to failure. This is something that's absolutely controversial, but every single workout, Mike Menzer trained to failure. That is not necessarily recommended for every individual, but on Mike Menzer plan, it's very different, and here's why. Most bodybuilders would train four to five days a week. So they might do upper, lower, all different types of splits. They might do three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. They might do uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, weekends off. That would probably be like the smallest, the, the minimum routine. Or they might, at the, at like the, the least amount of training would be like every other day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and you would just rotate. Didn't matter because your full-time job obviously was bodybuilding. Here's what Mike Menzer did. Throughout his career, he trained less and less but he trained with more intensity. He would take three to four days off between workouts, which is pretty wild when you think about it. So nobody else was really doing that, but here's how he was training though. He would do one to two warm up sets, and then he would do one set all out to failure, with good form of course, but he would also use negatives or potentially drop sets. So that one set may last a minute to two minutes, and it would usually be, be between a rep range of six to 10. His warm-up sets might be 10 to 12. Typically, that's what he recommended. I've listened to all of his uh, videos and seminars and teachings, especially back in the day. Uh, but six to 10 reps is typically where he was at. And they would be slow, controlled, and to failure and beyond. So typically there was always a partner to be able to watch form, to spot, to help with negatives, which if it was like a bench press, um, you take it down slowly on your own, they help lift it back up. You take it down then slowly on your own. And this is brutal training, like anybody who's ever done that before. But what it created was the greatest amount of stimulus. But he would only do one set because Mike was a really smart guy. He realized that it was more strain on the nervous system than anything else. And it would lead to more exhaustion and poor recovery. And the only time the muscles would repair was during recovery. So he would break them down over that one set. And then he would somewhat go by how he felt for when he should train again, because he would need to be fully recovered before training. Because if you train on top of already broken down muscle tissue, you're actually getting detrimental results. And so Mark was really, Mike was really smart in that regard where he was looking at inflammation, he was looking at how his body felt, and he was always looking at, am I stronger next workout? That goes back to point number one. Because if he was weaker, he's overtraining. I took that, when I started working with athletes, I realized, and I worked with a lot of high school athletes that were like Olympic hopefuls, they would sometimes be getting worse times and their parents would call me and they're like, what's going on? Can we do more strength training? Can we do whatever? I would say at this age, yes, we're going to do strength training, but if their times are going down, what's their sleep look like? What's their training schedule look like? Well, they're, they're in the pool six days a week. This, this is from one of my, um, you know, more famous swim based athletes. And I said, they're doing homework after school. They're in the pool, uh, at 6am they're getting up at five. This is a 13, 14 year old, you know, kid. They're not recovering enough. I'm guaranteeing you, try this out for just for three weeks to four weeks. Their times will improve if they train less. You need to talk, you need to work with a coach on this. And then we'll start the strength training and we'll see an even better boost. 
or we need to get more sleep or like, so like we just had to change the regimen. And so instead of then going to bed at 10, waking up at five, I mean, that's not even enough sleep for an adult. We went to bed earlier. We started, they didn't want to, but I said, let's just try this. We started to go to bed earlier and their recovery improved, which is my next point. Step number four, rest and recovery. So you literally need to recover in order to be able to train that hard. But if you train that hard, you get more muscle tissue breakdown. But then if you add the recovery to it, which is the sleep and the days off, you now give yourself more of an anabolic environment. Catabolic is when you're working out, breaking down. Anabolic is when you're rebuilding. So Mike Menser would take a nap sometimes mid-afternoon. He would get plenty of sleep at night and uh, he got great results from it. And he trained both clients on steroids and natural. He himself trained while on steroids and also while off steroids. What he found was that while he was on testosterone, so when he was on anabolic steroids, he could recover faster. That was a big thing. When he wasn't on anabolic steroids, it took him a little bit longer and he actually had to add a day or two more between workouts. That's when he started to go to um, every, every four days basically is, was his workout routine. Very interesting. So again, you can never compare your results and your training to someone on social media that's on some type of steroid. You know, it's just, just, it's just not fair to compare. You can't recover as quickly. You can't uh, uptake protein synthesis in the same way. And, and Mike Menser knew this. So he was very fair for all of his clients. The last one is this, replenishing nutrients. Mike Menser believed in a balanced diet, he believed in not eliminating carbohydrates. He believed in enough protein, of course, and enough healthy fats. He didn't go overboard. He got in plenty of water per day. He was one of those bodybuilders that would bring the water with him, uh, which was interesting. And he would use nutritional supplements even back then, which was very interesting too in the 1970s. So those were his, his top five. Build strength, that's paramount. Eat slightly above caloric like needs. So like if you eat X amount to weigh 180 pounds, okay, well, you need to go above whatever you're eating. If you're eating 2,500 calories per day, then you eat, need to add another 250 to 500 calories every single day. That's it. You might do 250 on your off days and 500 on your workout days. And um, it just depends on how quickly you want those gains to be. When I went from 160 something pounds to almost 200 pounds, I didn't change my height, right? My height was always the same. I, I did that by actually dramatically increasing. Um, I, I followed this plan. I mean, I really did. I trained more than I should have. I really did. Uh, I would have gotten better results if I went to more of Mike Menser's plan, but I love training. That's the problem with a lot of people. So I would do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. What I really should have done was just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Thursday, Sunday, and then just kind of keep going with the two days off minimum in between. So that is that. I hope this was helpful. Obviously, this is not the end all be all, but Mike Menser then taught this to Dorian Yates and many other successful bodybuilders after him who followed the same style of regimen and got the results they were looking for. So if you've hit a little bit of a plateau, you know, you're not making the gains that you want, just ask yourself, am I doing these five particular steps? Maybe not to the degree of Mike Menser, but am I incorporating them so that I can get a little better results that I'm getting today? Please do feel free to comment below. I'd love to read your comments. Any additional show ideas, I would love to hear those as well. As always, thank you so much, and do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp hearts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.